You are now inside Sonetta Studios, the House of Consciousness production, Black News presentation. All right, peace and black power family. Welcome to another song of the TV House of Consciousness production. You already know what it is. I'm here with a brother by the name of Brother Bumani Tayemba, and uh, we're gonna get into some interesting things here. The brother got some interesting information for you dealing with Africa and the tours of Africa, investments, and stuff like that. So, we want to um chime right in before I do that. I'm gonna say, um, peace to you, Brother Bumani. What's happening with you, man? Uh, greetings, our family. Uh, greetings, our brother Sanetta. Appreciate you having me on. I finally got on Sanetta TV. Just heck, excited about that and just ready to just uh, share and connect with the audience. All right. You have an interesting shirt on right now, bro, brother. Um, talk to well, us about that, man. As far as the shirt, this is uh, one of Tanzania's soccer jersey. It's one of my new favorite countries, literally the 10th country that I've been to in Africa. And ever since I started going there in November of 2020, we started literally, let me just make sure this is right. There we go. We started going there in November 2020, and then I went back again in November 2021. So I've been able to get some soccer jerseys and been pushing the marketing and promotion of this uh, new country that we started going to. And what is it? What is it really like in Tanzania? Like, describe it a little bit. One of the things I do, like, I've never been on a true, true safari, but I've been to the Arusha National Park. It's a great experience as far as just uh, being up in the mountains and seeing nature. Then they also have uh, Zanzibar Island, which is you know my favorite part because it reminds me of the tropics of uh, Jamaica on the, the north coast, like mm. Montego Bay, Negril, Ocherias. Just you know, beautiful uh, sand beach, beautiful water, nice tropical getaway. And then also Dar es Salaam is one of the biggest cities in Africa. A vibrant city with is a whole it, lot Is it like on. um dirt roads or like like concrete? Like concrete you know, and stuff like that. You know what I love about Africa? You get a little bit of everything. You, you, right. I mean, from from, right. from huts to villages to dirt roads to modern cities to uh, mm. tropical beauty. Uh, what I've learned is that um, you know we have, we have to show people different aspects of Africa. So that's what I've been doing because it's hard to like come up with like one aspect of what Africa is because each right. region is so different and so unique. The favorite region that we stay in is West Africa because of the connection with our ancestors and the Holocaust dungeons. And then we just love that nice tropical energy of West Africa. Remind me of uh, Jamaica and countries like that. With, what is uh, the main um, religion that's out there? Is it Islam, Christianity? Like what what religion controls out there? The top and, religion. And that's another thing that's uh, interesting. Depends on what country you go, it's more Islam and in some countries, is more Christianity, and in some countries, a little bit, you know, a little bit of both. And then you, you may have like a few percentage that's for people that are more of like a traditionalist, their own traditional religion, and things like that. That's what I've noticed when I travel to different countries and I see the breakdown. But it's usually Islam or Christianity at the top. The, in in terms country. of um, franchises, do you see things like? McDonald's is out there, Burger King is out there, Chinese food, because over here, you know, everybody comes to where we at and feed off of us. Is it the same out there in Africa where all these other people that really don't have no foundation in Africa go there to live off of us? You know, brother, it's the unfortunate. Uh, when you're talking about the big corporations of the world and you're talking about groups like the Lebanese, they're, they're enterprising. So yes, you have um, you, you'll find chains of from McDonald's, Burger King, and each country varies. Uh, in Ghana, I've never seen a McDonald's, but I've seen uh, Burger King and I've seen KFC and things like that. But uh, as far as just the flood of like when you driving down one of the main highways of somewhere in the U.S. and you see about 10, 20 different chains, it's not that polluted. 
but the mm. issue is it's it's getting there. Uh, so, and you know, the, the big corporations are always trying to find places to expand their their dominance. And so Africa is like the final frontier. So it's like a race to see who's going to do what in Africa. And what we're bringing is like an organic connection from the African diaspora to put their money together and then invest and do business in Africa so we can have black enterprises you know, all over the world, just like other people. And we can just provide opportunities for our children, wherever they are. Beautiful, brother. Um, let me give you a chance to go ahead and introduce yourself to the people in the community and let's, and, um, let you open up and talk about what you're here to do today. All right, uh, perfect. Uh, greetings family, this is Bomani Tayemba. I'm originally from Kingston, Jamaica. Grew up there in, uh, in 1977. Uh, our family left uh, Kingston, I want to say, uh, October, it was uh, December of uh, 1988. I was 11. And then I moved to Brooklyn, New York, uh, actually East New York directly. And I went and started going to school at six years old. I mean, at, uh, at sixth grade. So this came here at a very young age, um, uh, sixth grade, 11. And um, spent several years in um, Brooklyn, New York, went to a technical school to learn electronic uh, technology. And that you know built my future, my career. And from there on, I ended up just leaving New York in 18. Um, I joined the US Navy and it was just an opportunity for me just to get myself established and get myself going. And that worked out well. And this did about four and a half years there as an aircraft technician. So I was able to build a career and then I got out, I was hired by the airlines like a year after, a year once I got out, which I had to do all my additional training and courses and things like that. And moved down here in the south, uh, outside of Atlanta, and been here since 2001. And now it's 2022. And from that time frame, building my civilian career to also connecting with some good brothers here. And that started telling me about, you know, in, in 2003, telling me about black consciousness. And, you know, so that's when I started learning about people like yourself, uh, uh, people who were just putting out information. Uh, you know, remember those conscious DVDs? And, and then eventually we all converted mm. them to a, a conscious VHS. Then we converted Damn, them. Damn, man, you going all the way back, brother. Then we converted them to Woo. digital. So some of the stuff that we'd order from people like yourself in New York, and we'll bring them down here and share with the brothers. And then we, now we do study groups. So that was like the, the 2003, 2004 evolution when I just started getting into the studying. And uh, once I just got into it, I ended up um, purchasing a trip to Egypt with Dr. Renoko Rishidi that was set for April 2004. That's after doing all these studying, studying Nile Valley civilization books and things like that. It's trying to, like, you know, like getting into it and getting the, you know, and eventually getting the name Bomani Tamba. But the first trip I actually took to Africa was in Senegal, and that was March of 2004. My, a few of my coworkers told me they were going to Africa, and since I've already was planning a journey already, I was just you know I was really just open. So I ended up going to Senegal. It was a nice introduction into the African Holocaust. I learned about the, uh, our stolen African ancestors because before that I've never been to any kind of dungeons or anything. You know, you're just reading the the books, you're watching the DVDs, and you listen to the presentation from you know all of our great scholars. Uh, so I was able to just build that connection. And I went to Egypt and I met Dr. Renoka Rashidi, and that was like. That was like the foundation for me. And mm. uh, brother, that was like my literally greatest inspiration because it put me into the world of doing the organized tours because I've watched him as just a young brother in my, uh, it was around 26 at that time. I was watching him because we did an organized tour where you have a nice organized bus and they took care of the flights. They had a tour guide. You know, they had it all mapped out to where we went from, uh, from Cairo to Aswan in about, uh, I want to say about seven to nine days. And and you know, I just never had those experiences right there. So from March to April in those two African countries, never had that experience. And those two experiences changed my life. And later on in 2005, I went to other countries like South Africa, Kenya, and the Gambia. And then in uh, 2006, that worked out to where we started our business called Africa for the Africans. Uh, and that was in October, 2006. And we went on our first journey in December of 2006 to Ghana. And from 2006 all the way to December, 2021. I've done 20 journeys to Ghana in 15 years, and that's over 400 people. And it was like to build a foundation. Then I've also went to other countries in between that: Togo, Benin, uh, Ethiopia. Uh, we eventually did Tanzania. And uh, what was what was Ethiopia like? You putting in a lot of work, brother. That's that's some good work you putting in. 
Uh, yes, and the one the most important thing is that everything is recorded, so it's just right there wow. live on the YouTube channel and, and playlist. But Ethiopia, uh, this Egypt and Ethiopia is just incredible because it's these incredible historical countries that you see these rock solid churches, or you see pyramids, or you see statues that usually than anything else you have ever seen, and you just in your mind you wonder like, how was this accomplished? And it's like, how is our people so great? And we seem to can't build a community nowadays or can't even build certain basic things. Uh, but it's like, it's just impressive. And it just, it just makes you stronger and say, you know, because you've been taught to be in, to feel that your, your history and your culture is inferior. And then when you physically see it yourself, it just empower you. Mm, beautiful. Um, if I was to ask you, um, what what would be your um the religion you follow today with all the traveling that you have done with all of the information you have brother um and, and studying the do the do the dvds see a lot of y'all talk that talk about sarnetta but i put that work in and i touched a lot of people all over the world with my information so <laughs> with the dvds and the knowledge what would you say you um you follow brother please make me proud man what what do you, what do you yeah, follow Yes, I'm gonna be honest with you um, because you know, I'm one of the people that you can call a businessman, a salesman. Uh, but I follow um, no specific religion. I uh, just literally just show love to everything out there as far as because all my people are involved in everything, and it's just like the it's the same thing. Just like the political situation, I have friends that like in Ghana, they're gonna, they're into, and, and I try to just honestly because. You're trying to pull people together so we can put our money together to do business and things, and I'm realizing that. The more of those things that becomes like you know certain debates that cause certain issues of, and you know it's fun to just talk and debate about uh, politics, religion, and things like that. Uh, but sometimes I have to just watch it when it comes to business and things like that, because you know the ultimate thing of business is to make sales and you know, and to to grow in business and build relationships. And you find your people are in all different aspects of the world, involved involve in all different kind of religion and involved in all different kind of things. Uh, but as long as they're into uh, black power and nation building. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm down with them. And as long as they're not, they're doing anything to hurt our people. Beautiful, brother. Um, it seems to me, and I know the people that's listening, that you are definitely on the right path and you're doing the right thing, man. So um, talk to us about investments in Africa and why should that be important? Well, perfect. The, the main investment that we have um, is in uh, Ghana. We have 15 plus uh, 60 acres for a total of 75 acres. And we're building a community plus mm. also um, the commercial aspects of that community, you know, like your business center, your medical center, uh, you know, your parks, you know, certain things like that that you, that you need. You're trying to build more of a self-sufficient environment where when you're putting your money together, your money cir circulates to where now we can do group economics and we can compete with the likes of the, the Chinese, the Indians, the Lebanese, the ones that are doing more enterprise in Africa than anything else. Wow. So that's uh, one of the, the main things about uh, that level of investment. Other level of investment is trying to just get people in the country to where you have them set up to where they have all of the things in place and they know what they're getting get themselves into. Like one of the, the simplest investment in a country is treasure bills. Most African countries are developing nations and that means you get more on your investment for treasure bills, stocks, bonds, and things like that, fixed deposit. So you can open a bank account and then invest some of your money in a safe way. That's one of the safest ways to invest. Uh, so that's one aspect of it. And then there's a lot of things that we have not been told about how to move our money or things in the international business world. These are things that we talk about when we have business conferences in countries like Ghana. Other countries, we're, we're using more of our partners and our connection there to help someone if they want to, wanted to you know, maybe acquire some land, build business or do certain things like that. So the more we grow and the more countries we connect to, the more we look into this establish the foundation of being able to offer more to anyone from the African diaspora and say, hey, I want to come to this country. I want to live. I want to do business. I want to feel safe. I want to make sure that I run into certain things. So we just, you know, we keep the energy with the strength and numbers and we just keep strong together and look out for each other because the issue is no matter if you go to Ghana or you go to Jamaica, People see you coming, they're gonna like oh, some folks from America. They, they you know they, they walk with a bag, or they're gonna say that they look like walking dollar. Look at you as a walking dollar bill, and it's just it's what it is uh, wherever we go. Because when when you're talking about America, or specifically the Black American energy in America, people people in other countries may say, hey, you know, every, 
any of them that leave from America and go to all these other countries and pay all this money for plane tickets and hotels, they got money like that. And sometimes that's not the case, but you know, so, and some people want to really work you over as far as real estate deals and things like that. So you have to have people who you trust in the country and people who have a track record. And that's why we build this business to where we show a track record of taking people to Africa, connecting them, looking out for them and things like that. And when mistakes or things happen with people, we tell them to tell us what's going on so we can learn from it, so we can tell other people. Because if we all come into Africa and then we're getting shaken down, uh, you know, we're going to feel a certain type of way after a while. But so we have to make sure that those of us who know better can just protect the rest of us that's out there and let them know, hey, you, you can't just come to Africa and just think that you can just run into somebody and then make a land deal with you with them. And then you don't they don't even show you the, all the legal paperwork and all the legal documentation. And you always tell people, if you're going to do land deals, make sure you have attorneys and consultants. So these are the things that we have put in place and relationships that we have built to where when we went, went to do land deals or other business, you know, it worked out because we have covered ourselves. And but that's the issue that you know we have. And I'm always trying to just make sure that I reach out to our brothers and sisters and say, if you're trying to move to Africa, reach out to people like myself and let me at least you know uh, just you know have a conversation with you to make sure that you're good and make sure that uh, you're clear about what you're getting yourself into because it's not as simple as what you think it is. And too many people romanticize it. You know, it's it's good to reconnect to your culture, but also it has to be a, a situation where you have to take it as a serious business because now you're thinking about everything that you've worked for in America. And now if you sold your house, your car, and you cash in your investments and things like that, and you're going to move to Africa, you don't want to put yourself in a situation where you just lose hundreds of thousands of dollars. But those things have happened, and that's why we do these programs to look out for our people in the diaspora. And anyway, we just keep it that simple. How much truth is it that when you hear the statement, Africans don't love us. Africans don't care about us over here in America. What do you say to that? Because I know you hear people saying that as well. We hear it all the time over here. Being that you've been damn near all over Africa and you traveled and you meeting the people and you see them, how do they respond to you? All right, perfect. I'm going to put this in proper perspective because I'm not going to say that people don't say that because people do say that. I'm not going to. And also I'm going to also say that uh, most of the people that you may hear that from may feel some it's some level of ignorance because the reality of it is what we've been doing also we have a few people that travel with us that are local and you know maybe someone bring their their, their girlfriend or bring their friend on and then you ask people how much do you know about the africans in the diaspora and what they have been through and even simple basic questions and it's almost no one ever gives you any kind of answer this is not in the education system mm. and things like that so some people may be confused some people may think that with some privileged black people that uh, that was sailed away from Africa and things like that, and then see us coming back, uh, enjoying the country, doing things that they can't imagine doing, staying in fancy hotels, driving around in tour buses and living a certain life. And they may get on the hate situation or the frustration situation and say certain things. So I, I, I've seen that aspect of it, and I've seen aspect of people who are actually appreciate us because now, like the Ghanaian business partners that I have, you know, they, they have nothing but love for us because, you know, naturally, you know, you're doing business with them and, they, you know, making business from you. And also they see us doing things to help the country grow and things like that. So it's a, it's a two side situation. And also what I want to say is for those of us on the diaspora that wants to make better relationships in Africa, it's just up to us to be more diplomatic and, and things like that. And also it's just up to us to also educate our own people anywhere else in the world about those of us in America and the struggles of America. Cause this is where a lot of the movements went down and I'm telling people that uh, it's, very important part of the history. And that's why I appreciate all the conscious education because without that, people wouldn't know the importance of the contribution of black people in America historically from the, you know, from the, the foundation to now. So, uh, you know, we're stepping our game up and doing our best, even in a town that we have acquired land, which is two hours away from the major city uh, of Accra. So you know that the people that you're gonna meet, they're not gonna know much about us as a people. So now what we're doing is public relations. We are building relationships with the orphanage, the schools, and we're letting people know this is who we are as a people. We're stolen from Africa and we're here to return to build beautiful relationships. And we're here to just learn about our people and here to educate our people about ourselves and find some way out we can come together, put our money together and compete with everybody else versus everybody else dominating us. That's kind of how I look at it. And I try to push it out there. But um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm reading in the chat and I see people saying that Ghana has a Chinese leader. Is that true? <laughs> I think what they mean is maybe you're talking about a Chinese chief. 
Okay. And I think people have, I've heard people say that, you know, there's even like a police department in Southern Africa that's, um, that's controlled by the Chinese. Now, the, the reality of it is these are the things that you're going to have because while we're here just enjoying the life in America, we leave in our, you know, we leave in our people open to this other people that's taking advantage of them because if there's any people that know more about, um, you know, the oppressors, it's us as a people that's going through the process in, our, in, in this country and things like that. And uh, colonization is, you know, another different aspects of things. You know, you know all of it is r ruthless and brutal. Uh, but our, our people may be more acceptable to the situation based on colonization and things like that. So that's another situation when our people are not educated about the oppressors or their colonizer and things like that. They tend to just fall in love with them. So those are some of the things that happen. So yes, uh, but definitely not a Chinese uh, leader. But uh, yes, Chinese I would say if it's true, I don't know if it's true or not, but I, I take your word for it because you've been there. And I would just simply say if it is, it's because it's our fault as a people. We too busy running from Africa and China and right. all these other um, playthroughs are running into Africa because they know the power. They know where the resources at. We've been ignorant to allow the Europeans to teach us that Africa is a jungle. Africa is wild. Africa is savage. And so now you have people amongst us dealing with religion that even talks about Africa being a savage and being a jungle and all kind of stuff. And so now we are running from it, but they running into it. So they happy that we are not as interested in Africa as they are because they are educated. They know what's going on. They know where the roots are, the foundation. So let me ask you, uh, brother, um, are there any oral traditions of so-called Hebrew Israelites living in Africa? You know, the, the Hebrew Israelites that I know that I've done business with are the ones from America. Um, and they have a connection with uh, countries like Benin and Israel, and they do like food production. Now, when Israel. I say Israelites, I'm talking about Black African Israelites, not the um, um not the Europeans. Oh yes, but yes. Uh, the only ones I know is the ones from here in America. Okay. And when I go there in Ghana. Uh, they have energy there in countries like Ghana and Benin, and and you know we do business with them. But as far as in detail and certain things, uh, how they operate, I don't know. But literally every single religion and every single group is you know all over africa mm. but a lot of times i don't you know i don't really meet certain uh, specific group because usually we just do like conferences and you're thinking that um you know you know you're just thinking that we're just all here networking so okay all they, right they are there yes um what else can you tell us about um let me see Where, what's your flyer say again all right, I missed uh, it. I'll click on share real quick. And... Yes, go ahead. Share something for us. The journey of a lifetime, Ghana. Oh, so you'll be in Ghana May May twenty fourth. Uh yes, uh, that is our next journey. So I have a small group there, and um, we're gonna just uh, do some updated videos and documentation, and then show people the progress on the land, the houses that are going up, and then just you know make our way around the country in this connect our group to nice cultural energy. So that is the next journey. Then we have our uh, Tanzania. Uh, and these are these are literally nine, 10 day journeys that you just, that we have a full staff tour bus that we're making our way around the country. Wow. How long is that going to take brother? Like how long to the, make that tour? Now each of those journey, asking how long it is. Uh, it is about nine to uh, 10 days. Oh, okay. Ghana is 10 days. Uh, Tanzania is nine days. And so you stay in like three different parts of... Uh, right, right. Ghana. That's what I'm looking at now. I'm seeing it. Okay. I thought days. it was all together, but now I'm looking at the dates. You got um, Ghana, May 20, 24th. Tanzania, November the 17th. Ghana, again, December 24th. The Senegal, Gambia, uh, March 31st. Libya. Jul Liberia. And um, Liberia. 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 Um, July 20th in South Africa, December. Wow, you do that's some great work there, brother. Um, yes, if the people would like to go, is it open for the people? Like, do they buy tickets? How do they do that if it's there, open? There's two, two ways. Uh, individuals can purchase their own ticket and then purchase the land package portion, uh, which is usually if they get their ticket, the land package portion is usually 2,500. That's your full ground accommodations, uh, tour bus, tour staff, access entrance to all sites, activities, breakfast uh dinner and any business or investments uh anything like that that we uh, may have based on the itinerary 
And uh, the the full package uh, for countries like uh, Tanzania is 3,800 and for Ghana, it is uh, 4,000 coming up in December. So on the website, uh, they they range from 3,800 to 4,000. And that's uh, just putting together a competitive price. And half of that is basically accounting for the cost of the tickets because airline tickets to Africa has gone up. It's closer to $2,000 now to get to different countries. You may get something a little bit less, but uh, when you're talking about this, not having a bunch of long layovers and a bunch of connection flights, you know, you're going to have to pay that price. Yeah. And other countries that we do have for 2013, I do have a Tanzania schedule also for November and also a Ghana schedule for May. It's just, uh, I was only able to put those six uh, dates on there. But uh, basically, it's three journeys that I have for this year and then five for next year. And that covers uh, six countries, uh, cover... Uh, I cover Ghana, Tanzania, Senegal, the Gambia, Liberia, and then the last journey is South Africa in December 2023. All right. Um, I know you've been through the door of no return. Uh, yes, in a few different countries. Talk to us about that. You said in a few different countries? Uh, yes, example, I've been to... Um, the, the one in uh, Senegal, um, Gory Island, Senegal specifically, right. then Cape Coast, Elmina, mm. Cape Coast and Elmina, Ghana. And I've been to the one in Benin, which Be, Be, Benin, which is two countries down from Ghana. But uh, What was that experience like for you? The first time I went to one of those was uh, in 2004 in March in uh, Senegal and that's from that's from fresh from reading a Dr. Clark book dealing with um, dealing with slavery, and you know, so I was a little prepared and clear about certain things. But emotionally, once I went into the the cells, you know, you start of feeling you feel the emotions in your mind and your heart, and you feel because someone is explaining what happened to you, and you're physically there, and you're trying to imagine it, and you're seeing cells that's marked for children, for infants, uh, for men, for women, and you're being explained these terrible situations. Of you know women being women being uh, raped, um, men being tortured. Uh, you know you have they show you one cell, and that's for all of the the warriors who just was kept on fighting back. You know people will be uh, people will be held in these cells and literally locked in there for, for five days and they starve to death. You know it's just, when you hear about these things, it just traumat traumatize you. And then you know and it's it's consistent with all the things that you have heard about um, you know about the African Holocaust, all different variations of it from the from the aspects here in America. To the aspects um, in the transition, to the to the aspect that's on the physical land, uh, so and then the ones in Ghana are much bigger. They're basically just big fortresses, and you know, and the, the, those represent the two that's two biggest that's ever been built by European uh, uh, colonizers. And literally, you you go to the top, and it's kind of like a castle for them, paradise. And then at the bottom, the suffering, and then you'll see the church in the middle. So while they're in church, you have people, stolen Africans, you know, being put in a situation that they're ready to be shipped off to the door in a turn. turn. So once it's a time to get shipped out, you know, you'll be brought into, a, a, brought from a, and it's not a literally door that was there at that point, and depends on the country, but it's basically your last exit from Africa onto a ship, onto a small boat, then onto a big ship, and then will be set across the Atlantic. Uh, so that's uh, what those presentations uh, represent. Uh, very emotional and, uh, and the, the, the strongest thing is the fact that um, it's something that, you know, people didn't think that we would return. So people like myself is returning and bringing a whole lot of folks. And then we're coming together and say, hey, let's do business, let's compete. Uh, I understand some of us are emotional because our ancestors were stolen. And then, uh, and then after hundreds of years, we had to f find a path to come back and things like that. So what we're talking about is a, is a strong reconnection. And that's what we really just push and things like that. And letting people know that, um, well, I can't really tell anyone not to take it personal because different people are going to feel different ways about, you know, their, you know, the ancestors being stolen. Uh, so, but uh, for us to just come back and do this thing strong, it, it means a whole lot. And I just want to reach out to those who are open to that world so they can come on one of our journeys and we just literally just reconnect them to an incredible world by us sticking together, just like we should be doing in this country and put our money together and do what, you know, that, that famous blueprint for Black Power book talk about, Black Corporate Economics. 
for the for the people again can you explain to them in short time where are you from they are asking they are inquiring like where oh. are you from brother bumani yes i was originally born in kingston jamaica and i lived there for 11 years and i grew up in brooklyn new york lived there for seven years and since then i just been you know been traveling and building this uh business and building my career so lived in virginia in the navy and then also the last 20 years live here in atlanta and then been to 10 different countries in Africa. So my accent may be a little different and I've been to a bunch of countries in the Caribbean island. So altogether I've been to six continents and 35 countries. And that's from in the US Navy, working for the airlines and having access to travel and then building this business. So for the last 20 plus years, I've been able to have that access to travel and move around and meet different people and connect with different black people. And so my accent may, I don't, sometimes I don't know how I sound to people, but yeah, that's where I'm from. Uh, Born in Jamaica, grew up in Brooklyn, New York. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, brother. Um, are you open for phone calls now, people to call uh, in? Or you I, still oh, want to yeah. drop me on information? Uh, I'm open for phone calls. And at the same time, to him, uh, uh, be on the flyer. I can just uh, share my contact information. I try to share it. Uh, yes, let's go. Time. Share that. Have you came across um, any of the scholars, like, let's say, Professor James Smalls, Brother Jabari, uh, you know, people that travels in Fadizi, who uh, travels not, not constantly. Specifically, but, uh, you know, at one point, James Small and uh, Dr. Jeffries uh, was here in Atlanta working with the World African Diaspora Union, and I was a part of that group uh, in the uh, mid-2000s. Uh, but as far as in Africa, no. Uh, usually we just have our own program. We kind of like this, you know, build. But if I ever run into any aspect of our people, my goal is always just to just, you know, connect with them. But... But family, uh, for anyone that's looking to connect with me after the call, you can reach out to me directly at uh, uh, Georgia number 404-931-9429. You can text, you can send a message on WhatsApp, uh, your name, your information, and let me know your interest. And, you know, we can connect. My goal is always to give everyone access to the information that we have from our website to our social pages that was on that flyer. And for anyone that just want to check it out, to check it out, there's lots of videos with us all over Africa from nightclubs to historical, to cultural places, to business investment. I feel like we have covered all the aspects of Africa, to being out there on boats and hanging out with beautiful ladies, to socialize into this, all aspects of life and showing people this is how we see Africa. All right. Peace and Black Power, what's your name? Where you calling from? Hey, Sal, this is Apostle, man. What's going on, Apostle? <laughs> hey, um, interesting show. You know, I was talking to uh, a mighty Hebrew. You know, he made that move to Tanzania. Right, that's why I asked him. I said, interesting shirt you got on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm telling you, according to mighty Hebrew, I mean, he's having a ball, right? Yeah. He's, he's enjoying himself, he man. Happy. Yeah, he happy out there. Yeah, I mean, he got scenery. He yeah. got property. He got, he got land. Right? He got everything. And then the American dollar is like, does wonders over there. Right? Yeah. You take your retirement money that you get here in America and you go over there, man, you can live like a king. Mm-hmm. So, so, are you all willing, that so are you willing to retract some of the disparaging things you said about Africa, brother? Being man, I never said, I've never said any disparaging thing about Africa, man. Uh, Africa okay, man, is a land. Africa is a continent, brother. All right. Okay. Okay. It's a land mass. My brother, uh, Bumani, what do you think about what we are hearing there right now? Uh, yes, um, the way I look at it uh, is uh, the foundation of Africa has been around as a foundation before anything else, from religion to things like that, because before that seemed established, you need to have other things in place. Uh, and if, you know, we talk about Africa being the oldest civilization and everything, that's, uh, you know, uh, I try to just keep those things simple. Uh, you know, you know, it's because you can like debate for like for the next 20 years on a lot of these things. All right, so let's deal with the topic. What do you think about investment? Should our people invest in Africa? Um, I'm going to say we got to do some things, especially like a person like me. I thought about Ghana, right? Um, I know some people in Ghana. So I thought about Ghana, but Ghana is too close to the ocean for me. It's sitting right on the ocean, right? Hey, brother, Bumani? Uh, some part of it is close to the ocean, but you can uh, go from the 
the southern part of Ghana, and it takes you 13 hours to get to the northern part of the country. So if you don't want to live too close to the ocean, you can go 13 hours into the country. See? Is that elevation? Is that elevation? Is the elevation higher than six to eight hundred feet? That's a good question. I don't want to even say yes to something that um, I can't even process. Well, that, that, that's what you need to look for. You need to look for. You need to look for an elevation. Higher grounds. I got you. I got you. And eight hundred. So, but then you got other things. You got health issues. Like I take a particular medication. That even in America, all doctors can't prescribe it. Understood. You got to go to a special doctor to get the medication that I take. And yeah. I absolutely everybody don't have it. that Jesus pill, brother. We don't all take no, the Jesus no, medication. No, 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 stop, man. <laughs> no, I'm not talking about no Jesus pill. I'm being serious, si. All right. So I if you got a health condition, you better check. You better make sure that your medical situation over there. That's true. Um, right. Is 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 right. Yeah. Absolutely, serious business. Okay, yeah, and you got to make sure that you ain't got to ride an elephant 300 miles just to get to a doctor, you know, or camel. See, mm-hmm. so you you better check things out. But mm-hmm. the American dollar can go a long way on yeah. a continent like Africa, especially like I, I said, mighty Hebrew is talking about cans in here, and he's actually higher than 800 feet. Oh yeah, that's um, one of the first things I asked him. Yeah, Tanzania is up in the mountains, uh, so you you, you have yeah. that elevation, but, but you can find that elevation yeah. in Ghana because there's mountains in Ghana and there's mountains in the eastern region and things like that. So there's all aspects of the country you can find from beach to flatland to land and elevation. So you have no limitation. Um, I, I like what you said about your health care because uh, we you know we can never take our health uh, lightly. You know what I mean? And you always want to make sure that you have aspects for your you know the best health care. So what I'm telling everyone, and I've been talking about these things for a while in Africa, that you're only going to have so much. And in Ghana, you can have access to the nicest neighborhoods and the best health care. So they do have that aspect of things. But you have to put, you know, you have, you'd have to pay for it. Like some people told me that they are, they're in the military and they use the VA. Well, unfortunately, the VA is not there. But, uh, you know, you, if you want to come back to America and use the, you know, use the, 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 the VA military system for your health care, then you can do that. But uh, I believe personally that um, we should acquire land, put our money together, and build the things that we like and the things that we're used to, to have a level of comfort and then operate and do business as we need to do based on that comfort. Like people ask me, why you talk so much about Africa? Why don't you live in Africa? And I tell them, number one, it's simple. I have an 11 year old child here that uh, where, where our land is and everything. Uh, I'm fine with teaching my child, you know, basically, you know, homeschooling, but do, is there a proper school that I would send him to? And I would tell them, no. And then if they ask me about healthcare, and I said, none of those things would exist like that, but I can also bring them to the city and get those things. But what I want to do is to, to build everything up from the ground up. Now, my family is a part of this uh, community also. It's 50 plus of us. And I tell them that we put our money together. We can build everything that we need to build and, and be able to live in Africa to where we don't have any mortgage. We don't have any water bill because we're producing our own water. We don't have any right. electric bill because we're, you know, we have our, our solar systems and, and things like that set up, and we we're not paying for much for food because we're fishing and also we're growing things organically from the ground up and things like that. And then we're circulating our money. So when we're investing our money, money's coming back into the community, and you're building your life in a world where you have your own credit union and you can do certain things. So I looked at the best way that we can have leverage and and be in Africa because the the thing that I have to always look at, like, I can't, I, I live here in Georgia. There's no way, there's no way I'll be allowed to get all these acres in Georgia and have no problems, you know? Um, it, it's, it's just a situation that, and then talk about I'm going to build a black power town uh, where I own this and own this and only, only this type of people can, can come in and things like that. I'm going to have a whole world of trouble on my hand and things like that. So right. the importance of being in Africa, you can get the land and you can build a relationship with the town and the community and everybody will be fine with you doing these things. And things like that because at the end of the day what's going to happen everything that you're doing in africa is going to help the, the local people in that town that community and things like that so they're going to want you to do these things and here if you do these things it's more of okay you're shining like you you know you're trying to take over you're trying to establish a certain power and trying to do certain things and that's a situation that that kind of scares people like myself so that's why i end up choosing that route and w- once we get closer in, in age our goal is literally to build those medical s- facilities that we need and you're telling people like, 
if we're putting our minds together, we can get these things done. But so for some people that are a lot older that want these things in place and they're not and they're not going to live in a the city, then it may not work out for them. Uh, so, but it's a situation that if we put keep on putting time into it, we'll be able to have more of these things set up in the, in the Tanzania, Ghana, Senegal, Gambia, Liberia, and all these countries. But right now, that's the situation. These things are not highly established outside of the main cities, and which I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I'm not trying to move from America and go to Africa and live in any main city because all I'm doing is just wasting my money and then I'm living on the bad infrastructure because that's what it is. Most of the major cities are built up on right. bad infrastructure. So the ideal thing for me is like. Okay, if we go two hours away, we can build our own infrastructure and build the things that we need to build the way we need to build it. And eventually, different aspects or different parts of Africa are going to have to do that. Uh, you can't keep on building on bad infrastructure. You can't build on a situation where some people don't have water or lights this day and some don't have it the other day. And that's why I tell people that I'm not tapping into the grid because I'm not going to spend all this money and, and run pipe wires. Right. Into our Very important. Electric wires. And then you, you have inferior internet, not internet. Right inferior power and inferior water. So part of what we can do is bring the advanced technology that uh, we have and that's out there, sustainable technology, and do those things. And then you're talking about organic medicine, growing the medicine and the things that you need that's gonna, you know, that's gonna treat your health because most of the things that uh, we're putting in our body uh, from, you know, from, you know, from these nice hospitals and things like that, you know, we have organic ways that we can do it and save ourselves a lot of the stress and cost and things like that. So that's my, my solution to these things is we build it and we'll be okay. But don't go to Africa and expect to, to, to find what you're looking for to live long term unless you're willing to build it. Right. right. I got I got just two you know, in on this, man. Number one, you mentioned about water. You better look into that. Make sure you got water on your land. It's a big difference from people delivering water to you. That water that they deliver, deliver to you does not taste the same. Yeah, perfect. Uh, what we're talking about is we're talking about sustainable systems. So people do have the option to get water delivered. But uh, the things that I recommend, and I have a few people uh, who can do these things, it's building your own catch water system. It's using an ancient method in a modern day with a modern day system. So you channel all your water from your roof into your underground tank. And what you're doing, you're setting up a unique high tech uh, 21st century pump and filter system. So you basically, you know, countries like Ghana and Liberia, it rains more than anywhere else. So you, you you can collect water to where you always have about six months to one year of water in your own reservoir. And depends how big you, uh, you do your tank. And then you just treat your own water. So you'd be able to get the best water that you had in your, your life. It comes, from, it comes from the sky and you're treating it. Uh, you do have aspects of pumping water from the ground, which is uh, well water or what you call borehole which is fine, but I'm telling people why, you know, why defeat the purpose and go and get the water from the ground when the water comes from the sky and then you can harvest it. And then, so those are one of the unique methods. So that's what we have done. And everything that we're looking to build is to where you'll be able to have a better system than you currently have. Because when the power goes out of my house here, I'm usually just at mercy because I don't have any backup generators. I don't have anything in this house here in Georgia, but in Ghana, those things will already be in place. Go ahead, BK. Uh, peace to the brother that's on the panel. I just want to ask him, what's going on with the conflict in um, West Africa? I forgot what country it is specifically, but I'm hearing a lot of propaganda that's pushed out here in America that's saying that they're allowing children to fight in these wars. And it's like, I'm not sure if it's a civil war or if it's just like, I don't know, gang conflict. Can you kind of clear that up and tell me what's going on out there? Yes, I wish I knew uh, things about wars in West Africa. West Africa is a coast that, uh, you know, where we have most of the countries that we go to, Liberia, Sierra Leone, Senegal, the Gambia, and Ghana. Um, and the uh, only country I know that's in any kind of civil war issue is uh, Guinea, and that's also in West Africa. But uh, I know, never been to Guinea, don't know anything much about it. But as far as child soldiers, um, that's one of those historic situations where you're trying to find, you know, any people that can you can you can arm and and fight and defend certain situations, but um, yeah, I was just wondering where you heard that from because um, we know we have a lot of people in West Africa. No one has been sharing that information. Oh no, I said I know as a, a country in West Africa, I forgot which country it was, but I remember it was Ghana. Ghana. It was what Ghana? Ghana, Ghana. They had they had a, a riots protesting in Ghana 
about three three months ago. Interesting. Yeah, I was, I was just asking about on the panel what was going on out there because I because you know America is quick to jump to aid whenever European countries is ready to fight or whatever. Mm-hmm. But when it came to that situation, there was like it was barely in the media coverage. It's like they didn't give a fuck at all. Excuse my language. Uh, yeah, I did see. Uh, you know, sometimes you see a little civil and en- civil unrest energy in different countries and things. And uh, I did want to say somebody did show me a video, but it was nothing to where it was like uh, you know where they got child soldiers of people out there shooting and things like that. Um, so, but uh, you know, it's one of those things where you can't really, you know, you can't really just comment on all these different situations because it's something that you don't hear of much. Like the people that I've had that I have that I'm currently doing business with, getting ready to leave for Ghana. None of those things have came up, um, but the main thing that we always get from everyone before we travel is that everything is you know, travel advisory. We is, we're clear on the travel advisory, and then we're going to a country where there's no civil unrest or anything crazy because you know you're responsible for the lives of the people that you're traveling with and things like that. So that's one of the the hardest things. Well, so as far as what I know, there's nothing going on currently in any of the countries, and I see a list of a few countries here um, and things like that. So okay, thank you. All Absolutely. right, thank you, BK. All right, Apostle, you got any more? Sorry, questions? let me say this and hang up. Let me say this and hang up. There's a benefit in owning land, I believe, over there because once you purchase your land and you pay for it, you don't have to pay no taxes. Like here in America, I got land in and, and I got land in and, and um Arkansas up in the Ozarks. And I have to pay taxes on that land for life in order to keep it. I will always be paying for that land. Just like the land my house is on in South Carolina, the land my house in Maryland is on. I will, for, as long as I own that house, I will be paying taxes on that property, whether it's paid for or not. And in Africa and Ghana, once you pay for it, it's yours. I want to ask you this question be before you leave, brother, and it's a serious, sincere question. Are there any sincere, truthful, honest Hebrew Israelites on the planet, brother? Do they exist? You're talking to one, man. What are you talking about, Sean? I ask you that question is because I flipped on a channel yesterday and I see Elder Yara up on the channel talking about how bad he beat Jabari and the pseudo and all the Hebrews was on there and all of y'all was talking about <laughs> how he beat Jabari so bad. That's why I asked you, are there any Israelites <laughs> see you even gotta laugh <laughs> you even gotta laugh at it are there any sincere truthful Hebrews <laughs> do they exist brother it's like yeah, y'all living they, in a they, whole they, different they, world bro they they are as about as truthful and oh, as honest man. as you are in thinking that Jabari won. In oh, thinking that Jabari man. won with his intellectual so you, dishonesty you, you really and his like fake you information. See, you really acting like you didn't see Elder Yara read from a whole different script that wasn't saying what he was saying. That was really debunking his own claim. You didn't see none of that, huh? That didn't exist. Oh, that's the same thing they said about Matt Cowley. The yeah, same thing Jabari it, said about Naftali. She bumped her own information. Who has a habit of doing that? Oh, man. You know, right, let me let like you go, standing man. over somebody, that's pissing not, on him and telling him it's raining. Let me let you go. You are part of that group here, man. <laughs> Y'all are funny, man. Listen, <laughs> listen, listen, man. Listen, brother. Listen, listen before you go. To Zaya, Captain to Zaya, beat Jabari. Uh, there was no winner in Naftali because it wasn't a debate. They was just talking. There's no way to lose them. And I wasn't even sure that our, our elder uh, uh, Yala, that that was a debate. I really didn't see it. So, I haven't watched all of it. So, I really have to watch it um, before giving my opinion on it. But, it's strange that the Hebrews will root for the Hebrews and the comedic community will root for the comedic community. That's, see, I now you that. see why we love Captain Cesariak over here? Because he keeps it a hundred. If I was to ask Cesariak, if man. I was to ask Cesariak, he would say, man, Elder Yara got his butt kicked. He was straight up saying <laughs> Maybe. 
But that's still, that's an opinion, man. Just like your word is an opinion. Like my word, look, when you have an opinion, opinions are not wrong. And how you feel about it. You, you, I mean, right. you act like, you know, a so person's you opinion is their truth. I'm not scared, Chris Harris, man. Don't, Chris Harris, you don't, Chris don't, Harris don't boost up. Discussion. Don't boost up. Chris Harris, then he got the, well, he, he ain't got no new information that he's going to bring to a discussion other than that same shit that's been rotating around. And, and it's ball. It's crap, man. I ain't got time for it. that kid. He's the same age as my son. All right, Find somebody else to debate, man. Right, I'm please. above it, Chris Harris. <laughs> okay? I'm above you. All right. Peace, peace. Shalom All right. to you. Shalom. All right. All right, family. Get y'all callers in if y'all want to know anything um, in particular. Um, what else do you got for us, Brother Bumani? Uh, yes, definitely want to answer the, the last comment on here about the series of war in West Africa and things like that. And uh, one of the things I remember um, is, uh, you know, World War II, uh, you know, the European nations almost wiped each other out. And what they end up doing, they end up just putting their nations, their energies together and creating NATO, creating a bunch of different alliances and things like that. And now um, as weak as they are individually, they're strong together. So all, so the series of, um, you know, from civil war and things that, that's going on in West Africa, you know, West Africa is still my, you know, the most important coast for us as a people because most of us were stolen from that coast. But at the same time too, just like our, uh, the Europeans build up their energy to where I, I can't think of the, maybe there's been one or two civil wars after our uh, world war two, but it's been limited. So th that's what we as a people have to do. And we have to have uh, faith in the energy of what we're looking to put together in Africa uh, to make the big difference. So um, I'm telling people that uh, these are also countries are going to, that are going to rise because just like America had it, you know, as early days of their civil war and their civil conflicts and certain things. And, you know, they rise up from it. And it seemed like that's been the situation historically for, for a lot of major nations in the world. They have that period that they go to. And then from there on, they strengthen their nations, they, they figure it out and they grow together. So that's what I love about what's going on in West Africa is just growth because we have people have figured out that the ways of civil war in Sierra Leone, Liberia is not the way and things like that. So I'm proud of the, both of those two countries for, for putting things in place to where now they're inviting us over and now they're just putting the right set of things in place. Uh, yet another thing up. Uh, let's, posts. Yeah, let's talk about, um, and don't forget, are there gangs over there in particular countries? Are there gangs? Are there um, revolutionary groups, freedom fighters? Let's talk about that. Uh, yes, I believe. Uh, I would say. Uh, Are there yeah. bloods and crips and stuff as like that? As far as those specific gangs, uh, no, but uh, it's uh, one of those things where you know that you know there's units of gangs because when you see certain young young boys out there doing certain things, a lot of times they're not doing that on their own. They you know they have you know they have a boss that's you know that, that mm -hmm. boss that they're working for and tell them how to do the thing like you know whether it's snatching someone's phone and things like that uh, to if there's any uh, gun action. One thing I like about West Africa is. It's very peaceful. You don't have a whole bunch of guns available. Like where I'm from in Jamaica, guns are abundant. It just, <laughs> right. it's like the country get flooded with guns. So you see more gun violence reported like every month. But in countries like Ghana, it's a real situation. You know, we hear about this, you know, someone that's getting shot up or somebody doing a drive-by and things like that. So any level of gang activities is on, on, on a low level. And, you know, people are selling drugs and things like that. But it's on a very, very low level compared to what we know here in America, or where I'm from uh, in, in the Caribbean, and things like that. So, and then also, you know, beyond this, that situation, you're, you're talking about the countries in West Africa don't have these hurricanes and things like that. You don't hear about uh, hurricanes and certain storms and tornadoes and things like that, uh, or earthquakes and things going on. So you talking about, and then everything is, the weather, you're talking about 70 to 90 degrees, and most countries are very fertile soil. So let's try to add. About, what about the marijuana, the weed, and all of that? Oh yes, brother. No, we got to. You know, we got to make sure that you have those things because you have people that like. <laughs> you got to have them things, huh? They be over there smoking like crazy, huh? You know, I'm saying if you're gonna live um, there, we talking about growing things organically. So you have people yeah. who use the marijuana for medicine. Some people use it for the, you know, for the health as far as the tea. Then you have people use it for cooking. You have people use it for recreational use and things like that. So it's a, it's, a, it's an important herb. 
as far as this, uh, you know, for those many reasons. So I feel like, you know, you, when you have your land, you know, you plant what you need to plant and you're going to have less restrictions doing that where you're going versus if, you know, if I decide I'm just going to plant something in my backyard and then, you know, the, you know I'm going to get myself into a whole lot of issues and things. Like that. And I'm sure you have to put some legal stuff in place to do those things. And we're going to find out. But we're literally this into that world where we, we're going to cultivate everything from the ground up. All right. Are there any questions, family, before we end the show? Let's get it in. Let's get it in. Um, is there anything else you would like to say before we end, my brother? Uh, yes. Uh, let me just uh, do a quick share for our Go website. Ahead. Yes. So this is our website, Africa for the Africans Tours and Investment. And this website, I uh, built the first version of this website in 2007, and I've upgraded ever since to make it more modern and make it work. So what we have is um, a nice presentation. On the left side, you have a MP3 player that plays a lot of routing, some of our favorite uh, reggae music dealing with uh, from anywhere from black consciousness to this love, well, you know, so I call it love and revolution nation building mix. So nice energy of music. Um, and it's more than just uh, reggae, it's uh, just more focused on this, you know, black conscious songs and things talking about Africa. So you can always control it from the player on the left side and then have this uh, slideshow with some of our best photos from 2006 to 2022. Uh, well, it should be 2021. I haven't added the new pictures yet that we're going to be taking. But uh, it uh, represent 15 plus years of uh, documentation. Uh, and you can just, uh, just enjoy the uh, slideshow. And uh, once you scroll down, that's where we have everything set up. On the main menu, I have a list of all of the tours that we have to where once anyone click on it, uh, they'll see a full details as far as uh, tour overview uh, with all the numbers and prices. What's your website name? How do they get to it? www. Uh, what? The website is Africa for the Africans. .org. Got you. And once you're on africafordafricans.org, the most of what we have set up is just on the main menu. So what you're going to be doing is clicking on the countries that uh, you're interested in, and it'll just be titled by the country and the, the month and the year that we're traveling. And anyone that's interested in investment, investment is the first one that's on the top of the main menu called Black Star Repatriation and Pan-African Community. And it just, this website is detail-based. So once you click on any of these links, it just give you a full list of information. And once you read through the information, and then you fill in what, what's, uh, what you're reading. Then you reach out to me directly and call me at 404-931-9429. Call from. Go ahead, or, go ahead, finish, brother. Or you can send an email to me at afta2010 at msn.com. Say your number one more time because the phone call came in. And the number that you can uh, reach out to me directly to talk about what you've reviewed is 404-931-9429. Two nine. All right. Peace and Black Power family. What's your name? Where you calling from? Yeah, my name is uh, Ledet. Uh, I'll be in chat as Joe King. I'm from Kansas City, Kansas. Uh, question I have for the brother is, as, uh, as far as like you going over there to uh, start the uh, the thing that you're talking about starting with for Africa for the Africans, uh, what part are you going to be in? Because I wasn't, I didn't get to watch all of it. Okay, perfect. Uh, the part that we're talking about is uh, Ghana is where we're going to be building the Black Star Pan-African Community. So on the website here to the left, when you click on Black Star Pan-African Community, you'll see the details as far as all of the legal files, uh, our full presentation links and information for what we're building and doing there. Uh, so that's specifically Ghana and other countries. Uh, we haven't been able to, you know, we, we have investment connection, but it's mainly through our business partners there and things like that. This community is a community that I put my money together with my other uh, members and we literally just, you know, made this investment as a group and things like that. So we're learning from this one to do it in other countries or also encouraging other people to get involved in acquiring land and building communities so to where we can build generational and family wealth and this group economics, all those wonderful things that we should be practicing everywhere in the planet and things like that. So. That's what we have set up. So, but the foundation of what I have is a tour is tourism based because many people don't know much about Africa or what they're getting into in Africa. So, by traveling on one of these tours, it makes a hundred percent everything clear whether you want to do something further in Africa or whether you just leave, you just enjoy the journey, and then you just don't ever want to go back again. 
it literally clarifies everything. Oh, okay. And uh, let me just show people that big banner again, Africa for the Africans towards investment. Are you interested in traveling to Ghana or uh, seeking out investments? Or are you looking at a different country? Actually, I've been looking at that list. There's a lot of countries that are doing that, uh, that return, uh, African-Americans return to Africa. Is that a part of that? Uh, the, uh, what you're doing, is that a part of the Ghana? Like they asking us to come over there and they're going to give us land. Is that a part of that? Uh, no, I have my own individual program. Everything that you see right here is I wrote and researched and done from the ground up and put my own people together. So the land that we have is not free land. It's land that um, it's three thousand five hundred dollars for a plot of land, and then you have like survey oh, okay. and three fifty and things like that. But um, only thing I'll tell people: be careful of whoever's selling you free land. One thing I don't like about free land: somebody give you land wherever they want to give you land. We literally went out and found oh. land where we wanted to find it, which was always two miles away from the beach, and then two hours away from the the main city Accra, and then same thing two hours away from the other main city uh, Cape Coast. Cause we want to be directly in a rural area so we can build from the ground up literally and things like that. Uh, so that's the issue with free land and things like that. And then free land have lots of stipulations. When I signed the deal with the chief, it was no stipulations in it. Like uh, in order for you guys to get this land, you got to build a school, you got to build a space shuttle and things like that. There's, there's like a lot of times, you know, you don't want to deal with those stipulations. So it's best to just pay things off and, and, and so on. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, I really like that. Uh, that's all I have. So I know that you're the greatest, man. Hey, man, y'all keep Thank holding you, it down, man. All Hold right. Up. Peace to you. Hold tight. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, my brother, Um, do you got any last last words, brother? Bumani. Uh, yes. Uh, any last words, uh, family? Uh, once you're on our website, these are the links of what we have up. Uh, click on it, check it out, and let's uh, communicate. Uh, I'll be on standby to reach out to individuals. If you don't get me, just uh, leave me a message and I'll get back to you. Um, my goal is to communicate with people effective and everything. And looking forward to more of us and join these journeys and open our minds to invest in Africa and, and create a beautiful future for our children where our children could be the boss of their their you know their, their generation and uh, enjoy more time with us this building what we need to build and building black ownership. Uh, so family, once again, check out our website, africafortheafricans.org. Uh, my YouTube page is youtube.com forward slash Bomani2007 and Instagram at Bomani2015 and Facebook at Bomani. All right. Thanks a lot, my brother. Appreciate okay. you coming right. through. Absolutely. And uh, we'll check with you probably in another two weeks to see the progression, brother. No doubt. Absolutely, family. So appreciate um, everyone's time and appreciate you bringing me on, brother. And good. looking forward to connecting with more of us. And family, take care. The journey continues. All right, peace. Peace and black power. Thank you for coming through. All right, family. Um, Damn, I got to go and pick up my little buddy. I took my buddy to the barber shop today. He getting his hair cut. Some people say groomed. So I got my little buddy, white dog, and the black cat. They get along together, white and black. You know, they get along together. And um, I got to go pick up my buddy. He should be ready. Let me make sure he's ready. Let me see. Come on, come on. Yeah, my buddy go get his little grooming and massage and, and all of that shit. Get his nails done and all that. Please leave so, your message. So, yeah, yeah. We got to make sure my buddy is ready. I don't want to lose my spot. Hey, Professor Smalls, how you doing, man? You calling me now. Uh -huh. What's happening, man? I called you earlier. You ain't, you know, what's happening? Yeah, I, I wasn't able to take the call. What is it? You think I'm supposed to take every call that come in? I have things to do. If oh, I could have taken it out, yeah. 
I know. I just had a real good brother on the show just now, and I know you would love to talk to him. He's been traveling. But I probably, I probably wouldn't have loved to talk to him. You got to give me some advance. I'm, yes, sir, I'm Professor. Just, we were supposed to do a show. What happened? You got tired on me? You went to sleep on me? What happened? No, you said you go, let's think about Sunday and you'd call back Sunday, but you didn't call. So I figured Sunday was busy. Okay. When when do you think you're ready? I want you to know, too, before we go any further, that I'm already live. I was doing a show and I picked up. So we are live. The people can hear you. Yeah, but I, right now I got to go into it. I've got to get out of here first thing in the morning to go do a funeral. Okay. In Dallas, Texas. So I, I'm really on the roller skate right now. Yeah, I had to let you know we are live so you don't make a mistake yeah. and uh, curse me out or something. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and beat, no, me up, was, beat me up I for not, just, you know, being, you know. <laughs> no. But um, so what are y'all doing? What, what are you talking about? No, you I just ended today? the show right now. It was um Brother Bumani, and we was talking about um Africa and African investments and stuff like that. That's what Brother Bumani from Georgia? Yes, yes. And that brother who I turned on to Africa many years ago and don't oh, even wow. hear from. Oh, wow, yeah, that was him. That's him, yeah. <clears throat> he, he's doing great work over there now. He's doing great. He should, but he ain't come back to the person who introduced him and said, yo, bro, how you doing? <laughs> That's why I was calling you, see? Yeah, but um, he'll be back. It's good, though. Yeah, no, Bomani's been doing really good in the last few years. Yeah, I've been he following. brought your name up. I mean, he, he shouted you out, so, you know. Yeah, no, he's, he's doing good. I just saw, read something last night or night before right. that he's working on. Beautiful. But it's summer trip. Yes, yes, exactly. That's right. So um, when do you think you'll be ready, Professor? Well, I'm going to do Brother Ted's funeral tomorrow, and then I'm flying right back tomorrow night. I'm just flying to Dallas in the morning, do the funeral, and back to the airport and come back. Okay. Any anytime next, you know, the nineteenth is Malcolm's birthday, so. Yeah, I gotta go. I ain't going to you last year. I'm gonna go this time with you. Yeah, you gotta you let should. the people see how you put that work in, and you've been doing this for the past how many years, Professor? Fifty-four. Every year, Professor James Smalls make a pilgrimage to Malcolm X gravesite, and he leads a tour of young people, old people. It don't matter. This brother been putting in that work, and that's why whenever we got an opportunity to make a donation to Professor James Smalls, we need to do that. No excuses. We know where that's going. And so he will be on, hopefully, before the, uh, May 19th, so we can be ready for that. That's going to be yeah. awesome. I'm going to be there. No, I'll get back tomorrow night, but it'll be late when I get back around midnight. Okay, okay. Because I'm just going to go in. Do the funeral. Brothers gonna pick me up. When I get to doing that, they're gonna take me right back to the airport. Oh man, beautiful. Okay, my brother. All right, peace All and right. blessings to you and the family. Okay, I'll give you a text on Sunday, let you know that I'm back. All right, got you. Okay, so now right. I was looking at a, something with um somebody sent me a clip on um college, and there you was in the back, you and Malik. The Bears and um, what's the big brother, the Indian brother, Geronimo's grandson? Yes. From Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I said, well, they go a young, a young son there. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, brother. Uh, okay. So Peace we'll talk. All right. Peace All right. Okay. Oh, man. Professor Small is always good when my brother called me and check on me. You see that? That's what's happening. That's what's up. Yeah, you call hey, me? Cynthia, Cynthia. Yes? I want you to know that I am live on the air. Everybody here. And I'm just calling to ask you, is my buddy ready? Yes, he's ready. You coming to take me? You coming to get me, right? Yeah. Did he get shampooed and groomed? He got his nails done and everything done? Yes, he did. <laughs> All right. I'll be there in about uh, 15 minutes, and we're going to go. All right, babe. Thank you. All right. All right, babe. All right. All right. Yeah, so see, my buddy is ready um, to come home, and uh, peace and black power to everybody. Thanks to everybody for the love and the support that y'all show, the HOK. And um, we out of here. Peace.